Hello, everybody. Can you please touch your head? Now, touch your nose. Now, touch your shoulders. And now, put your arms straight in front of you. And now, shake your hands, shake your hands. I want you to feel the energy flowing through. Thank you very much. Well, that was the first action of the simplest and basic way of leadership. Everyone in this room is a leader today, ready to lead and also be led. By this means, we actually are saying that all of us have that little key to start a big change in the world. We actually love always talking to lions that are willing to roar. So thank you for today, roar with us. It is very, very basic that all along our story in school time, we had several talks, about a hundred or maybe a couple more, about every single guy or girl who wanted to make a change in the world. It was very, very inspiring, we have to say. But at the end of the road, we forgot. And we forgot because we had this kind of profiles. We had presidents, we had CEOs, we had business women or business men showing to us what a change would mean. But they were not someone where we can relate to. So it was very difficult to understand what they were saying from their point of view. It wasn't a girl or a boy that they were looking for in those stereotypes. So we are a new generation. We are a young generation. So we actually make a change. We have to make a change that we actually can fulfill. So this was just a lie. The first premise we have to say is that kids over here in the world matter. Why? Because they're now being more conscious than we were as kids. Young generations actually are making a very, very big change. Not only generating consciousness about being eco-friendly, but also about building a relationship of tolerance due to the fact that they've got now this internet and now they understand that being able to agree to disagree is how the world finally works. So, we've got this first premise about kids mattering today because they're not only helping us understand different things, they're actually making better health choices than us. They're not, cho they're not choosing juice and water in state instead of artificially flavored soda. If we haven't learned those skills of leadership, we could have a new generation of change. We should take all of kids that are showing proof the a new generation of leaders. Whenever they play, whenever they say they want to play, I don't know, hide and seek, or maybe they want to go to see some specific movie, they see this like socializing. But the truth is deeper than that. They are showing proof of leadership. And we have to encourage them. Encourage them to have these skills all the way along to have a new generation of agents of change. For an agent of change to start arising, there is a big terminology right now that we actually use a lot. It is called the Medici effect. Medici effect by Professor Johansson means that everything over there in the top is point A, that is me and the art. And everything over here is point B, and it is her and the sports. And even if those point A and point B doesn't, doesn't like apparently have things in common, they get the point where they converge and they generate magical ideas. And this is what happened to us. We combine two things. I am actually a lawyer, an actor, and a singer. So I have to tell you one of my stories. During several years of my life, I worked in musical theater. And the thing I loved the most about being on stage was looking at the audience. Because whenever we were playing a role or a part, people from the audience just looked at us different, with hope, with dreams. And there was some special light in their eyes that made us believe on stage that they were daydreaming and they were generating ideas through emotions. That means those ideas were crazy, were maybe dumb, were maybe silly. And part of them, of course, they stay inside our mind. But just one single idea could actually make the change for entrepreneur of impact, as we did. 
when you have a good idea, like Wendy was saying, you have to communicate it in a community. And there is no very community that are a bunch of people doing something that they love. For example, what I love is swimming. More specifically, I do fin swimming. So I'm an athlete since 2002. And I train in Bogota. And I have to wake up every day at 5 a.m. in the morning to go to train. And it was hard because it was so cold. But anyway, I do it because I was, I was, um, yeah, I was so happy to go to training because I have my club, I have my friends. For that reason, I all, for that reason, I always keep myself motivated. Uh, something that I learned in all my years of sports is that if you have a body, you already are an athlete. So everybody here are an athlete. We are all the same. The difference between us and Olympic athletes is the effort and the energy and the intense that they put in the training. But all here, we are the same. I also work in, the, in a run club in Bogota. And in all my years of, of, of sport, I always think in the time, I always think in winning. But work here in this run club teach me a lot of things. Because the goal, it wasn't, I don't know, the time or exercise. It was exercise, but also it was have a lot of fun. And I really got the idea until one regular girl told me, like, you can imagine what you and this run club have done for me and my insecurity issue. And that's where I get it. The simple idea of have a running club can change cities, can change hearts, can change hearts, can change people. So I knew in that point that I was in the point I want to be. I knew it that time. And that's why the time that we met, like running. So that's basically our story in very short terms. But actually, when we kept talking about having ideas, about consolidating these ideas in solid groups revolving around one single idea, we were, ha we were having something that was missing. And this that was missing was executing and was acting our own craziness. So that is when our first entrepreneur project appeared. We opened our first shop in Bogota in 2017 called Awe. The startup, it was really difficult because we have a beautiful place, a really beautiful place in Bogota, but it was very, very small. So we have a huge window, you can see over there, I was like behind the window. It was huge and it was beautiful and we do it in that way because we want that people can look all the preparations. But at the end, I have to cover it up because it was a mess. So the people really didn't enjoy what they seen. So we have to cover and if we stand one behind the other, we can fit. Because I mean, the place is, was really, really small. Being an entrepreneur here in Colombia is tough. It isn't that easy, but is it? It isn't impossible as well. We had our first startup created, but then one day we're talking to a chef, a friend of ours, and he said, you guys have an amazing product as entrepreneurs. But the difficult part was getting people to know that product, like people giving the chance to stop by our booth and buy something. So we started doing something different and adding an extra spice in our selling process. That was having a voice. A voice that could actually give an opinion about what choose to select, but also to talk about the story behind the creation of Awe, which was a lovely, hardworking story. So people start to fall in love with the process. They start to fall in love with us, like at mid-20s, you have some business guys over there, so they're super cool. And then they started to fall in love, fall in love with our products. But still, something in our hearts was missing. Because we were so thankful, but we couldn't get to the point where we were actually giving back. And precisely, that was the answer of that something that was missing. We had to give back. Because the more you succeed in life, the more you have to give back. So being able to help others through our entrepreneurial project was so beautiful. But we didn't know really who or how we could help. So thinking about it, we say one day, like, we have to help the one of give us all. So at the end, we're finishing helping nature. 
So in that moment, like our project is called AVE because we're in love of all the birds that we are here in Colombia. We tell we have to give at eight percent. We have to give the eight percent of our monthly income to this project, to the project of the preservation of birds in Colombia. So that's how we started AVE Social. That is our social part in the business. We're also well having the chance or the duty, most of it, to implement that responsibility of our idea inside our four walls of the kitchen. So we decided to avoid plastic packages and plastic use. And we started making that transition into sugarcane and hemp seed packages, utilizing a wooden utensils. So that way we're actually making the change from within our shop. Then we went outside our shop where we could actually talk to the farmers to make a fair trade deal. This means that they actually get what they deserve for the selection of the fruits and vegetables we have. As a matter of fact, and as a plan of expansion, we came here to Santa Marta, our second home that we called. And we were one day at the beach, looking how people didn't actually care anything about trash, about garbage, on a Sunday in, in the afternoon in Playa Los Cocos. So we decided that was a very good gap to create and generate a new impact in a new city. That's when we started what we see over here, beach cleanups. And this is how the beach would look if we keep on doing what we're doing in about 20 to 30 years. Nothing but water in the best case scenario. But then we've got this. Nowadays, we've got turtles, fish, among some plastic bottles, garbage, cigarettes, cigarette packages, cans, whatever thing we can find. I mean, we found even matrix. Yeah. So that's very funny, but that's not, that's not to disencourage or to like undermine our effort. It is all in the contrary to keep on working because we've done several sessions from Playa Los Cocos to Playa de Bello Horizonte and started cleaning up with at least 200 volunteers that, were, that went with us to the cleaning session. And that was just amazing. We had a blast because we had like a party. So we actually got the chance to spread our idea. And these are some pictures of the, of the cleanup we do here in Santa Marta. And as a matter of fact, there's something special for us and for the world. We really don't pretend to impose. We only want to create an echo in the place that we live in. And one of the things that we want to tell to you is we don't sell a product, we sell a story. If you want to sell something, don't sell a product. Sell a story. Sell something responsible. Sell some responsible idea. It's never too early to make a change. And it's never too late to do something to change the world. So, you have to start impacting your friends, your school, your work, your city, even your neighborhood, and at the end, the whole planet. Everyone can impact. A young guy or a young girl that is in here are agents of change. So we've just, we, we have just two questions for you guys. The first one, what are you doing to impact from your stand? And the other one is, what are you guys waiting to start an entrepreneur of impact project. Thank you very much.